playing Jarvis Landry. Why? He's playing against a, a Pittsburgh defense has really been stepping up lately. So right. they're like, don't play him. Mm. He's a slot receiver. He gets his man. Right. Baker Mayfield will hit him like ten or fifteen yards, like ten times, and he gets like ninety yards. I'm like, I'm good with that. Mayfield, <clears throat> corn stash Mayfield. No, the corn stash goes to Gardner Minshew. Yeah, dude, but only because he had the headband. <laughs> Like, he was straight out of an 80s flick, so... i give him 70s. 70s? That dude even had the freaking handlebars at one point in time. <laughs> With a name like Gardner. Gardner Minshew? Oh, shit. All right, man, bring us in, dude. Over here. Over here? Yep. I got a new necklace, by the way. It's kind of... i seen that, man. It's okay. It's not good. what I thought it would be. You got it from K Jewelers. Right. And the the advertisement in the, in the ad was nothing like this, but I'm like, you know, it's got a decent weight. It's It's okay. Yeah, what what is it if you don't mind me asking? Uh, the metal. Okay. The uh, tungsten? No, just a regular metal. Re- regular. Uh, stainless steel. Okay. Uh, right. gold plated. And gotcha. It's got the silver in there, but you can barely see it. But right. Whatever it is, what it is now, I have it. Right. It's plain, dude. You need like a like a Wu Tang medallion. I thought thing. about it. I thought about it. That's why I just went ahead and gave you the Dragon Ball right. Z today. Nice, nice. You know, uh, gave you the little pilot. Okay, okay. But I am Mr. Classic today. You know, today. Not Rupert's Matterhorn, though. Hey, you, you know what? It may be a multiple personality thing, but today I am Mr. Classic. Uh, and, of course, I'm B. Smith, and we are here, Three Crafty Bastards. Uh, ready to bring you another show because that's what we like doing. So, we do. uh, first up, if you've ever seen our show, you know that we're going to do this in segments. So, uh, Facebook Live, yep. we might cut out, we might not. We'll probably just keep the party rolling. Uh, over here for the video that goes up on YouTube, uh, you're going to be able to catch us in different segments. I should have pulled that shit up. Dude, have you seen our our library yet? Last, I looked at it a couple days ago. 26 videos and counting? Yeah. That's nice, right? Yes, it is. Not a lot of views, but that's because people aren't telling their mamas and their mamas' mamas. So we're going to work on that. We'll work we'll, on we'll get it out there. bringing videos and then continuing to promote videos that we're doing on YouTube and then on Facebook Live as you well. You know, the interesting thing is, as I, as I don't think I mentioned here that uh, about the radio pursuit, right? but there's a lot of things that I can't say on radio that I can say here. Right. So this is a big advantage. Yeah, like curse words, first of all. First and foremost. Yeah, fuck it. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, honestly, man, like, the you were telling me a little bit of the ins and outs of uh, learning about radio and a lot of the things you can do and, and can't do. And it's I'm like, lot. so wait, so you mean to tell me that you can't do this? And you're like, yeah, you can't do that at all. <laughs> well, what, but what if I say, yeah, you still can't do it? <laughs> Well, what, what can you do on radio? Oh, right. You can pretty much just talk, and that's it. You can play G-rated music. That's yeah. Real, it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <should. laughs> Speaking of G-rated music, uh, Aladdin. So we watched that over the weekend. And I'm late. I'll admit it. Yeah. You know, I went and got it, it, you know, and, and I thought, like, what's the worst that could happen? So we pop it in on Sunday morning. Whew. What a ride. Really? Yeah, it was, it was great, except for Will Smith. I thought I would. I never thought I would say that about a movie. Ooh. Everything about it, I liked, except for Will Smith. It's hard to replace. Robin he Williams he had like movie. three jokes. Matter of fact, we'll talk about it later. Uh, but we got Disney Plus Tuesday night. We were talking about it. We're like, man, let's do it. Let's just get the year. Okay, what's the first thing we pull up on Disney Plus? Aladdin, the animated one. Oh yeah. Right. So we get to the point where Robin Williams uh, reveals himself as the genie, Mm -hmm. and I'm, like, tickled. I'm singing the songs. I'm sitting there eating my dinner, singing the songs. Prince Ali. Like, dude, I enjoyed every second of that, and then it made me dislike Will Smith even more. Like, with total disdain. I don't don't know that I ever want to see anything. I'm sorry, Gemini Man bombed. It looked like it could have been a cool movie. It It wasn't. Okay. But I don't want to see anything that Will Smith has to do from here on out. He's peaked. Fresh Prince. Oh, he already peaked. Yeah. Bad his Boys, last, his last Fresh peak, Prince. He's got Bad Boys 3 coming out. 
Right. I will be seeing it. Certainly, but are you are you geared for disappointment as far as this movie goes? Because you have to consider it's not something that they originally wanted to do or they would have done it already. You have to weather your expectations. That's what they call it. I'm not okay with that. Well, you know, and they're older, and Martin Lawrence has picked up, like, yeah, yeah, state yeah. puff weight, marshmallow weight. Yeah, an additional Martin Lawrence, you know, from back when the You So Crazy days, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Which was a hilarious stand-up, by the way. He's definitely not shenanigans. No, no, no. But, you know, he's, uh, I think the comedy's there. I think uh, the action's going to be there. It's going to have a similar theme, it looks like, as the very first Bad Boys. You think they passed the torch to anybody? Be, so that the Bad Boys franchise can continue, but maybe they can move on? It'd be hard to think that they would do that. Because mm. you saw in the clip where they were like, the people in the police station were singing the Bad Boys song, hey, yeah. oh, stop, don't ever do that again. Right, right. So I think, I don't think they're passing along the uh, the torch. I think this may be the last ride. Well, that's cool with me. And I'm cool with that too. Yeah, I, you know, if I never see another Will Smith movie, I, I think I would be okay. Like, it'd have to be really, really good. I don't think he's lost it. Like, that. Pursuit of Happiness kind of good. Uh, I heard the the concussion movie was good. I haven't seen that one. About the concussion in the NFL? Yeah, like the... He's a doctor? Yeah, 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 certainly. Anywho. Well, we're back. We're here. Now that you've heard me rant about Aladdin and Will Smith just a little bit, I don't have to talk about it later. And uh, so Marlon, Mr. Brownbag... From the last time that we recorded, wanted to keep his beer a secret. Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So he brought it upstairs. He brought it in a brown bag, and I couldn't look at it <laughs> until he was ready to do the reveal. So I go, and I'm like, hey, man, I got the beer tonight. Uh, I'm going to go look at something for us to review. And he's like, oh, man, yeah, great. And I'm like, okay. So I bring it home. I put it in the fridge. I start to open the fridge. Marlon's standing right there. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. You can't look. You can't look. Uh, so I had to bring the beer up and this awesome, 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 I don't know if you guys can see this, this awesome dainty kind of lunch bag. Uh, I feel like I could probably color some of this in like with a magic marker yeah. or something. Nonetheless, I bought this for a golf outing because it does hold beer. And you will find that in this bag, I have, I've never seen on any of our golf outings, a cold glass. Ice. Nice. Yeah, 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 right? I pulled that out of the freezer like 20 minutes ago. Excellent. And here's the reveal. Huh. Hey, you know what? I wish we may have kept a, a running idea of the artistry that we've had on some of the cans. Right. I still like the one I had last, last yeah. week. Yeah, with the, with the dollar signs, yeah. the four buck chuck. Yeah. Yeah, our 14 buck chuck, I'm sorry. 14 buck chuck. Yeah, that was awesome. But when we started talking about kind of the beer that we wanted to try or like, it's like, what are you in the mood for? I don't really know. And then he comes here and I'm like, well, I got two different kinds of beers. I got one light, one dark. What do you think? And he's like, let's go dark. And I'm like, all right, bet. Yeah. Here it is. And I was kind of hoping that he would choose dark anyway, because I've only ever had one cream brulee ale. You didn't say that. Ever. And it was made by Stone. That sounds delicious. And it was amazing. No, it wasn't made by Stone. It was made by somebody else. Anyway, it was amazing. Del Southern Tier. That's who made it. Mm. Amazing, right? Uh, but that cream brulee ale had a higher alcohol percentage and was actually a little more smooth uh, than, if I remember correctly, this one was. This is, looks very creative. Yeah, so Duclaw... Right, is a, we knew we've had Duclaw. We've had Duclaw before. Uh, we I don't know if we've had Sweet Baby Jesus, which I was just reading about it earlier. They pulled Sweet Baby Jesus from bars in Ohio because of the name. I believe it. Right. I believe so, it. Uh, Duclaw is a brewery out of Maryland. Yeah. Okay. Baltimore. And be more. Yep. And if you give me thirty seconds. I will pull up some of the information that I have on Duclaw. Can I pull up? Yeah, certainly. By all means. I just want to read the description real quick. It's a creamy, velvety, medium-bodied brown ale. So I'm not going to get into everything that Duclaw has to offer. Holy smokes. But here's their beer list. 
been making beer since 1900? Nah, I don't know, man. But if you can see, check this out, man. Right here. I don't know, you might not be able to see because of the glare. Oh, there you go. There you go. And it's backwards, but whatever. Uh, that's the Dewclaw's beer list right there. So, pretty extensive while we're looking at it, right? Uh, this particular one is uh, the Patri Patriarchies. Uh, and they make a few of them. This one says uh, Dark Cherry Pistachio. Mm -hmm. There's another one, Valencia Orange Chocolate. Uh, cinnamon Raisin <clears throat> Vanilla Imperial Stout. But the particular one that we happen to have, Tiramisu Imperial Stout. What? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, just looking at, you said pastryarchy. I'm starting to get into this now. Yeah, so pastryarchy, the, the one that, okay, one more. I got to mention one more. Barrel-aged Vietnamese coffee stout. That sounds really, really interesting. And Vietnamese coffee is pretty amazing. Is it dope? It's it's the one that I've had, where they had to put this cream in. It's a very strong coffee. Put a cream in. It's called Cafe Suda. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Really? Yes. So that would be really interesting. That particular one is a Russian Imperial Stout at it's eight and a half strong, percent. I was about to say. Yeah, this gives everything: the ABV, the rating, the average. Mm. So it's got just about everything. And this is just if you just go to Dewclaw Brewing Company's website, Ooh. you can certainly check this out. How handy is this fucking thing? Super. Yeah. Super. Right. Right. So uh, we happen to be drinking. The Cream Brulee Brown Ale is what we're going to review today. And I'm going to go ahead and pour. Marlon, can you give your initial thoughts on this? Uh, I was looking at the color. Um, I think you can definitely see a difference. You said dark. I can see a difference between this and like a stout or porter. Yeah, sure. There's a, to me, uh, because of the stouts and porters are as dark as this is, stouts and porters are darker. Right. So, and they're a little thicker because they hold a little more, more flavor, in my opinion. So, the density of a stout or porters is going to be darker on this. But this looks and smells delicious. It smells, it clearly smells like creme brulee. Clearly. Like, if you've ever had it, it talks about the caramel custard. You can smell it. I mean, it smells like, uh, like you're drinking dessert. Like, right. Uh, uh, Care Bear came over, right. saw the Choco Vase, and thought it was going to be something sweet, and it wasn't. I bet. I bet she liked this. Yeah. Well, I mean, I bet. have That's you ever had this before? I have not. Okay, so we're at least heading in the right direction. The Pastriarchy Cream Brulee Brown Ale from uh, Duclaw Brewing out of Baltimore, Maryland. Eight and a half percent. Uh, it's actually, if you look at it what... Could be low. No, the ABV is eight and a half percent. Oh, I'm at the. Oh, the IBUs. IBUs. Yeah, the IBUs are certainly not even on the charts. I'll probably, I was gonna say I'll probably give it about 30, 40. I had something over. I, the, I would be surprised if it was even that. Honestly, I uh, I had something over the weekend, and and it was a an American IPA. I didn't think I was gonna like it, and it was around ninety. That's kind of out of your. It was out of your realm, and I drank it, and it was. Where'd you have it? Down in India, obviously, right? Yes, and I can't remember who it was, what it was. It was more so trying it. Yeah, but I oh bowling alley. Um, the guy had a three Floyds. There's only a handful. Three <clears throat> Floyds. Space station middle finger. No. Gumball head. No. Uh, why are they Alpha Alpha King? No. Alpha Claws. No. That's uh, a shame you know all of those, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's gonna. It's on the tip of my tongue. If I looked at a list, I'd nail it. But uh, it was something that I said I would hardly. I hardly. I don't drink anything like that. And I looked it up on my phone, that Untapped app, mm -hmm. and I saw the IB. I was like, Yeah, I might not like it. Just let me take a sip of it. And it wasn't awful. It had the it had the the hoppy aftertaste. We're gonna see if we can find this gear. Uh, Any no, well, maybe it was the Ryan guy's truth. Ryan guy's truth is actually good. I know you think that stuff is good. I, I'm just saying the truth is their IPA, man, and it's actually not very heavy for their IPA. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that had the IBUs up around ninety ish, between seventy and ninety. 
I feel like if I seen you drink anything three floats, I would faint. Honestly. The only one I think I drank, uh, I keep saying the Cron, but it's it's wrong because that's an IPA too. They yeah, have one the that's Kron a Scottish. 99. They have a Scottish ale. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's the one. Uh, uh, Robert the Bruce. Yes. Yeah. That's the one that I'll drink. <laughs> Why do I know all these? <laughs> <laughs> you basically name name like the whole franchise. Okay, <laughs> okay so uh, again, let's let's get back to initial thoughts going into this. What do you think? I th- I think it's going to be delicious. Okay. Without even, I mean, like I said, just off the smell, and. I like brown ales, so I'm a fan of brown ales. And I had one, I gotta say, I so I just recently picked up my beer club. Just a side note, real quick. I recently picked up my beer club, and you re, you remember we did a Bell's Two Hearted mm-hmm. uh, Ale recently because it was voted the number one best week. beer in America. Right, our last show, that's what mm-hmm. we did, right? And so, just so happens that I end up with Bell's Best Brown Ale in my beer club. Huh. Lackluster. Boring. You can't have all winners, I guess. Yeah, it was, it was boring. Like, I my issue is that everything is the best as far as the bells goes, but it's just like, eh. Maybe they just specialize. I think I think almost every brewer. I bet I bet if you pull breweries, they have a signature that they just pour their heart and soul into, and that's what their best is. I'm sure, but I that, bet they do. I, you know, it's probably the two hearted. And mm-hmm. we just, you know, our palates are different. And we don't think that it's the great, it's drinkable. Yeah. It's very drinkable. You can drink more than one. It's just not the greatest thing I've ever had. Yeah. You know, and I think we're constantly looking for that next best thing as far as beer review goes. But like, you have to travel a little bit more because, like, we like that one that I brought back from Triton. Yep. That'd probably be our one in our top five. Triton's know. got another good one, the Rail Splitter, their IPA. I didn't try that, of course. It's good. I, but I, wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind making another trip down there. Yeah, dude, we, we totally should. Okay, so let's do this. Salute, guys. Salute. Do claw. It's exactly what I thought it was. That after the the taste resonates. It's not even the aftertaste, it's the whole damn taste. It is. It the is. whole thing resonates. It is. The whole time from when it when it enters, it um, kind of bubbles a little bit. The uh, Effervescence? Yes. Um, <clears throat> you do taste almost every flavor that it says it's in there. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, I would say it is sweet. Um, even down to the finish. You know, the thing about sweet beers is a lot of the time the sweet is the the forefrontal taste and yep. then it kind of dies out and it takes on the the signature beer taste at the end yep. and this certainly is something that carries all the way through i can i can 100 percent agree with that yep that, that's all i got i mean it's it's really sweet it's delicious it's it's, it's as advertised okay. for me so if you get the opportunity check this out right here pastryarchy cream brulee brown ale eight and a half percent do claw do claw. I'm over here on uh, YouTube. Yeah, I got guys, it. check that I out. Got He's it. got it. He's got it. So they can focus in on reading backwards on the on the mm-hmm. ingredients. Certainly, certainly a good drink. I mean, this is gonna be fun to drink. This would be the like of, uh, the show. I can definitely see like this. This is definitely something I would definitely have at a brewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it has like a seasonal. This is definitely. That's what I was just saying. It's like a holiday holiday beer. Yeah, exactly what it is. Yeah, I mean. If there's anything that the holidays remind you of, it's certainly desserts, yep. food, yep. Uh, fellowship, friends, family, all yep. of that, you know, and having something like this, being able to sit around and politic, for lack of a better word, over a beer like this. Oh, yeah. This is perfect. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. So let me ask you this, uh, before we get ready to rate this beer, is this something that you would possibly take to your friends and be like, you guys got to try this? Um... The bulk of my friends uh, that drink beer, I have one that will drink almost anything. Uh, one that is uh, IPA based. Right. That's Dernell. Everyone else is uh, basic beer types. It is t- difficult to get some of them to drink certain things, but I, I, I bring some and like uh, Dernell will bring his IPA. Hey, Marlon, you got to try this. Like, right. But I'll try one just for the fun of it. And the bulk of them are still nasty, but I'll try them. Right. 
But what I did see for the holidays, uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon. 99 freaking beers. <laughs> oh my gosh, I did see that. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That's something that these guys, uh, that some of those guys would buy. I think there's, there's a friend named Pat Garrett. Pat Garrett would probably love the 99 can, whatever you want to call it, of beer. How do you even transport that home? You'd think it'd be heavy, but they were they were just carrying like it was almost nothing. Wow. Yeah, no thanks, man. Honestly. I mean, I enjoy PBR every now and then. I've never had one. Like, twice a year, it's okay. No, I mean, I've I had a house somewhere else, like, at our, at our bowling. Like I said, they, they, were, were, they, say, they say they're a drinking team with a bowling problem. Right. So there's, uh, there's constant pictures of beer all over the place. And the first time I bowled with them, I couldn't see the pins in the third game. Oh shit! It was that bad because they also, if you if you throw a gutter and you don't pick it up, you gotta buy a round of shots. <laughs> so <laughs> that doesn't help when you get to the second or third game. You can't see anything. I like, enjoy drinking as much as the next man, but that is <laughs> that is most certainly why I do not drink for like drinking sport. Yeah, well, like probably. beer pong, I'll play a couple games a year. You know, but like kings or like pick 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 up the queen or what whatever the fuck game you have just made up for the yeah. holidays to try yeah. to get people drunk yeah i'm not gonna play i saw a new uh, we speaking again we play flippy cup i have played flippy so cup there's a new version not a new version but a different version that i saw where it's like flippy cup uh tic-tac-toe that would actually be pretty cool i think uh yeah you you, flip, you drink it flip the cup and there's a tic tac board, and you try to get three in a row, and you and your other person either trying to they're trying to get yeah. two, or they're trying to stop you. Right. So it looks pretty fun, but I don't know if they're going to play. I bet that. that could get intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely down for playing that. playing with competitive people. Yep, certainly. Okay, so as we always do about this time, uh, it's time for us to do two things. One being our traditional in gladiator fashion. Do we want to? Uh, how do we want to rate this beer? And then actually something that we've added here as of recent, uh, we're actually going to give this a be this beer a one through five rating. Yeah. This beer, this beer is eight and a half percent. Things could get interesting. So in true gladiator fashion, as always, three, two, one, it's up. Yeah. It's certainly up. There's no doubt. Yeah. Uh, I'd be interested to try more Duclaw beer. Now, oddly enough, even in the the, the fancy schmancy liquor stores, mm -hmm. I've only ever seen maybe like four or five varieties of Duclaw beer. If I'd known to look for them, like, you know, that, that, um, that Belmont up off DuPont. Right. They have an immaculate... Um, presentation and variety of what they have to offer i think they're that's probably one place you might find it because it's so large in there well they okay so for some of the ones that we showed and here let me just pull this back up and i'll i'll talk about it briefly because i know we got to wrap this up but for some of the ones that are listed here uh let's see let's see let's see serum Double X IPA, American Pale Ale, Sweet Baby Jesus, which is the American Porter, Dirty Little Freak, which is also another one that you can get off the shelves. I saw that tonight. American Brown Ale, uh, Hellraiser, an IPA, Neon Gypsy, Devil's Milk, which is the American I've Barley Wine. I've never heard of that. Hell on Wood, Funk Blueberry Citrus Wheat. I want that. I 100% want that. Uh, 31 Pumpkin Spice Lager, Gross, Sweet Baby Java, which is basically the, uh, Sweet Baby Jesus, but with Java, with coffee. Uh, Bad Moon Porter, Retribution, <clears throat> Pumpkin, which is American Imperial Stout, Sawtooth I've heard of before, Sour Me This, huh. Berliner Weiss, Sour me unicorn farts, which I have had unicorn farts. We did. Yeah. I think we did. And I think a friend of mine, Erica, she uh, just, I don't know if she was looking for it or had it, but she did put that on her page today. Oh, that's, I got to have some of that. Like, I'm not a huge fan of uh, 
I'm not a huge fan of being interrupted by this fucking tablet thing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I got to get some unicorn farts. And then there's also the like patriarchy like series. So like I said, tiramisu. I would like to go through that list. Apricot stealing. Like, can you imagine like either go to a tasting or just have a flight or flights of that? That's insane. That's got to be like the summit of Boston. Yeah. Right? Because, I mean, our summit, our summit brewing has a ton of beers. What is it? Like almost 50 caps. And let's say 43 of them are homebrew. Mm -hmm. And the other seven are guests. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Let me see that. Uh, so, yeah, man, that's a ton. And I... Oatmeal raisin cookie. Wow. Hey, get me off this damn page. We can't <laughs> we can't continue to go through this. Anyway, so uh oatmeal cookie. Yeah. I'm stuck on that now. Right. Uh, I don't oh. even like oatmeal cookies for real, but I drink the beer. What if that was an oatmeal stout? It probably is. With something there. It'd probably it'd probably be like a raisin. Like maybe a raisin undertone. They've done that with beers huh. before. I'm a, very, very few. I'm a little enthralled now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, if you had to rate this beer uh, one to five, what would you give it? I'm, I'm bordering. Um, I jumped immediately to four, but I want to squeak two points ahead, point two points ahead, just for the season, right? Because it fits so perfectly. So I'm, I'm really looking at about a four point two. I can agree with that. I'm actually going to go a little higher. Uh, I'm going to give it a four and a half. Hmm. And the reason why is for a few reasons that we kind of talked about. Uh, one, very delicious uh, dessert holiday beer. Mm -hmm. uh, two, the flavor is paramount on this. The flavor is like no other. Three, 8.5 alcohol percentage on a beer that tastes delicious like this. Yeah. You kind of you kind of killed two birds with one stone right there. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, we're gonna go looking for this when we're in the next couple days. I will be going looking for this. Yeah, here's what I can tell you where to get it. I'll tell you once we're done. Yeah. Uh, but <clears throat> here's one of the things that I will say about this beer. If there's any downside, I will say that you could probably not drink more than two. I agree. Because the taste <clears throat> is so sweet that it's almost any more than two would probably have you sick. Well, usually with a beer like this, I have a Side a side glass of water. Yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah, because it's all about the flavor. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know. So, yeah, four and a half percent, man. All all day. Uh, Patriarchy, uh, the cream brulee brown ale, Dew Club Brewing, Baltimore, Maryland, eight and a half percent. Uh, for three crafty bastards. I'm B Smith, Mr. Classic, and we're gonna take. Are we taking a short break? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to take a short break. We'll come right back, man. No problem. Oh, hey, wait, 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 wait. Is that Janelle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you missed it, fuckstick. We're doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. You got to go back and see that. Pastryarchy from, from uh, Duclaw. Uh, Marlon said he's bringing some. If I see some, I'll get you some, Chris. You got my word on that. We'll be back in two and two. Be right back at you.